Well, it's another camp, another week, another camp. <laughs> we'll be, uh, I'm gonna set up right here, between these trees right here. We got a storm coming in. You can probably hear the wind or see it. And it's supposed to rain. All right, I got this one side pinned up. We'll get this one. All right, we'll pin her up right here. I want to take some slack out of this thing, so I just slide that up there, milk it out like that. All right, so something I just got an idea for and I never tried before is how you know, the snaps in the beast match the snaps in the ponchos. So I thought, well, what if I snap this thing in here in, in the four corners kind of pull the edge up over a little bit and i'll put my covers in here and we should be in pretty good shape well i just had kind of a maybe a harebrained idea which actually if you know me very well that's pretty typical <laughs> i just uh, you know i put the beast i put the beast in here in my dyneema poncho hammock and I just got an idea, I thought, well, because, you know, it's, it's pretty likely it's going to rain. So I want to have something over me. I thought about why not, why not snap in the uh, tent pole adapters that go with the beast and try putting a canopy over top with tent poles. I don't know. It could be absolutely maniacal. It's the new word for the day maniacal so see I'm just gonna snap in here throw those straps over this might be just ridiculous I don't know but how else do you get good ideas but trying ridiculous things and I'm not afraid to try ridiculous because I'm a little off anyway okay we'll get our tent poles out and I am going to use the grip strip that comes with it, Slipknot. The fabric is called Slipknot. They use it on baseball gloves and gloves, different things that you want to grip and it just doesn't slip at all. Now if, you already, if you've already bought these uh, canopy temp poles from us and you didn't, and you bought them, you know, more than just recently, um, you know, drop us a line down in the comments section. We'll, we'll kind of be scanning that. And let us know that you didn't get any and we'll make arrangements to get you uh, a grip strip. Alright, so now, I have no idea how this is going to work. So now we poke this into here. I really suppose I'm going to need to let these out a good ways. And we'll put this one in over here. Okay. So there's my setup here. I'm going to be competing with the wind as I talk. Pretty sure. Suck the shock cord down tight against that, and that makes it so it doesn't move at all. Does this look stupid? <laughs> With the wind blowing, I don't know how loud I got to talk so you can hear me. <laughs> I can always turn it down in editing, so I'll talk loud. All right, so here's my canopy. You got to try to get this over top of here and hold it in place while I figure out how to nail it down. How to? I want the canopy to float with a hammock. I don't want to. I don't want to be tying it out to the ground. Test for for this deal. Something I never even planned on. I just like, bing, you know, like Thomas Edison. It just popped in my mind. Bam! There we go. Uh, hey, what the heck? I'm going to try it. One thing I, one thing I like is 
tying it off up here that helps keep it pulled you know this way and then my temp pole is going down like so on here so it's hanging low on the sides which is nice to give me some coverage the other nice thing is I do have airflow through the peak of this so you know if it gets rainy and muggy I'm not I shouldn't have a lot of condensation problems because I do have airflow through there so how does it feel just to be right in here on a cutting edge of innovation will how about this how does it feel to be right there to be in on it to be on the cutting edge of wilderness innovation <laughs> I had to throw that in there, you know what I mean? Well, I gotta get a little more things ready for camp before maybe 45 minutes before the sun goes down. And it really gets wild around here. But I do like this. I'm, I'm feeling kind of good about it. Let's have us a little fire. There's pine needles in here are kind of green, so. <laughs> The winds calmed down for a few minutes. I built this big kind of rock wall on the wind side of the fire so that I can actually have one and enjoy it. But I'm gonna let this dude rip right here, I'm telling you what. It's pretty windy out there, building this uh, kind of fire pit, this U-shaped fire pit here. This really blocks the wind nicely. I'm sure you can hear the wind just screaming out there. Well, here's my little shelter. A little home away from home here. So you can see the shelter. I got room inside here. The tent poles hold everything up and kind of out of the way. Well, it finally happened. <laughs> the Dyneema, the Dyneema poncho went out on me this morning. So. I finally found out it's not unbreakable. <laughs> At first I was a little disappointed, but now I'm now I'm kind of excited about it because, because now I know I know where the point is. I know maybe I should have not done some of the more destructive type things quite yet. I know that and I know that the weak point here is the hood. That's why I come camping every week is because I gotta test it. I gotta, I gotta see, I gotta push it. That's why you see me a lot of times walking on stuff or whatever, stuff that's not meant to be walked on, dragging stuff that's not meant to be dragged. So anyway, I'm excited about the Dyneema fail. And uh, now, I've, now, I've, now I've got a point, I've got a definite point to work on and I know, I know what I've got to accomplish. Hey man, don't do this. Why did things evolve from a knife to a hatchet in the first place? It have it has all this part of the hatchet back here or axe. What's that there for? We might say well, it's there to hold the handle. Well, if you just use a knife, you don't need all that. The reason all that metal is on there is for weight. You want to have weight. Why do you have weight? Because when you swing, all that weight you've put into motion drives the thing through the wood. One of these days I'm going to see somebody batoning a full-fledged forest axe. That'll blow my mind when I see that. So anyway, I mean, you know, just knock it out. What's the problem? Some quick kindling pieces. I mean, just like, you just... Is that hard, no? I've been doing this kind of stuff most of my life, which helps. 
But that's where the practicing comes from. All right, grabbing some of my thinnest strips. I'm gonna blend those on here next. Kind of in a little, you know, I could, I could build a log cabin fire or something, but that right there will be just fine. I don't have to be, I don't have to be a designer builder here. And then we just start throwing some more stuff on here. And you know, it's nice to, sometimes I really get into it. I don't like to lay everything out, you know. I'll get a ruler out and measure the distance between them so they're all spaced even and everything. I don't really get a ruler out. <laughs> all you gotta do is have some, just gotta have a little bit of airflow in there, that's all. I don't wanna build this up too much right at the moment because it'll just fall over. And I'll save the rest of that wood there to, uh, save the rest of that wood right there to, um... room back in here, but hopefully this, these pine needles are a little green. I think some people cut them down when they're up snowmobiling here in the winter time. So see that piece of wood right there is already catching fire. And that's what we want. So, that's Perry Peacock fire starting skills. You don't, you don't have to pay any attention to me. Well, it's about noon and I'm getting ready to have breakfast. Kind of like always. I went hiking this morning for about two and a half hours. Went way down on in the canyon, kind of exploring around. I got the fire going, waiting for it to burn down for some nice coals. But not a bad time to take a little siesta. Okay, the usual thing here. When I'm cooking on the fire. Dive down in here and get these red hot coals. Dump those down in there, get me a little bed of them together here. And then put all that back together. That'll keep generating me some more coals as needed. Well, the oil's hot. Well, we should be all right. The reason it's kind of an omelet is because I don't have much of any fancy ingredients to put in it today. Alright, I got my pepper jack cheese, one there, this is thick cut too, I love it, one there, okay now, I'm going to remove this from the fire, up to here, and this piece here has been preheating so it's hot on top, so that will help melt that cheese down, do all that without burning. Well, I get into my fry pan bag. We make these right there. Covers a fry pan cook set, actually. But I'm going to use this old fry pan here. This old pie pan, not fry pan. I don't know how many years I've been hauling this thing around. It's still good. Oh, look at that. That is melted. Perfect. Okay. Get it into here quickly. That's going to be good with all that heat. Is my little Go Bites duo here. Snaps together. Very nice. Really sturdy, sturdy stuff, man. And you can even make it into a long version. But. So right here I'll do my do the trick. Got some paces salsa. And I think I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. Because it's chunky and I want some chunks on there. There we go. That'll be good. I'll start it off with a ice cold milk. 
Ooh, almost hurts your teeth. The milk carton's been sitting in the midst of all the ice. It is just cold as it can be. Well, there we go. Kind of a kind of a scrambled omelet. So here's my real tree ultralight poncho set up as a hammock. I love it. I'm addicted to real tree extra. I don't know why. I can't stand it. I love it. Well, inside of it is the Osni narrow blanket in real tree also. And uh, got urban woodland on the other side. The narrow blanket has snaps down one side. I've got it snapped down the back. So when you're rolling over and stuff, you won't pull it off. But the other side is totally open and free. Easy in, easy out. You gotta love it, man. The Osni narrow blanket is just enough without being too much. We have it available in three ounce apex or five ounce apex. You're gonna love it. It's perfect for your hammock. Beautiful deal. Here I've got a, uh, a different type of setup over a hammock. And the ultralight people, uh, really, a lot of them really like this. This is an asymmetrical tarp. And this, is, this can be made from either our ponchos or this right here is our HSS, our hammock shelter system. But what we're doing is we're, instead of pitching it in an A-frame style, we're pitching it kind of diagonal across opposite corners and so except in you know heavier conditions with weather it'll do the trick for you and it gives you more coverage uh, while carrying less fabric and less bulk now what I've done here is I've used a prusik loop and I've used it up here this is a Dyneema shuttle sling here so I've, I've put this above the top of of my shuttle. You don't want to put it on the shuttle because if it's in the upper part of the shovel, it'll shuttle, it will loosen and drop your, your hammock. So it's got to go on your static line. So basically, it's a prusik loop. Let me pull it out this way, be easier. Ah, there we go. So right there, so see, it's just a prusik loop wrapped around my wrapped around my hammock line. That way I'm not using a whole bunch of extra uh, parachute cord or anything either. And then I just put a toggle through there, let that come back. That holds it in place. And so that works really nice. This Prusik loop right here is a new one we're, gonna, we're offering now. And it's made out of the Dyneema Lashet. And so it's the Dyneema Twine. And uh, this, this will hold 500 pounds. So no problem holding enough here. For our uh, HSS series, um, <clears throat> basically we're pitched on the diagonal. So we only have two tie-outs to ground. We have two tie-outs to the actual uh, hammock uh, <clears throat> suspension line. And that's all it takes and you are good to go. One of my favorite things is these clean canteens. This is a 48 ounce. It fits right over a glacier cup or any of these stainless steel cups. So now I got something to cook in and I can even cook in the clean canteen. Very nice. I think a practical use of gear.